This is Melanie Fine of Chem and 10, and today I'm going to go over some stoichiometry examples. There are four classic types of stoichiometry problems. Moles to moles, moles to grams, grams to moles, and grams to grams. The general approach is you go from grams of one substance to moles of that substance, and then you convert it using a molar ratio to moles of another substance, and then you convert that to grams of that substance. We're going to use this basic approach, and we're going to use it to solve any type of stoic problems. So we're going to start with the unit given, we're going to convert it to moles. The moles of that species, we're going to convert to the moles of another species, a second species, in a balanced reaction. Then we're going to take that moles of that second species and convert that to the unit wanted. So whatever we're given in a problem, we're going to turn it into moles. So if you're given grams, you want to turn it into moles. If you're given liters of gas at STP, you want to turn it into moles. And if you're given molecules, you want to turn it into moles. Whatever you're given, turn it into moles. So let's start with this equation. We've got five moles of hydrogen peroxide reacting with two moles of potassium permanganate plus sulfuric acid. React to produce five moles of oxygen gas two moles of manganese sulfate, one mole of potassium sulfate, and eight moles of water plus 418 kilojoules, which is a form of energy. So this is an exothermic reaction. It's giving off energy. The question is, how many liters of oxygen gas at STP can be produced from four grams of sulfuric acid? We're given four grams of sulfuric acid, and we want to find out how many liters of oxygen gas at STP that would make. So remember, whatever we're given, we need to turn into moles. So if we have four grams of sulfuric acid, convert that to moles, and the only way we can do that is to know how much one mole of sulfuric acid weighs, 0.1 grams per mole. And of course, to convert liters of any gas at STP to moles, we need to know that one mole of any gas at STP takes 22.414 liters. Finally, we need to convert between sulfuric acid and oxygen, and we get that from a balanced equation. Three moles of sulfuric acid produce five moles of oxygen. Now we're ready to solve our problem. We write question mark wanted, question mark liters of oxygen gas at STP is equal to 4.00 grams of sulfuric acid. Dot. We'll set up our conversion factors to count units in the previous number. So here we have grams acid in the numerator, so we're going to put, want to put grams of sulfuric acid in the denominator, and we get that from the molar mass. 98.1 grams of sulfuric acid is equal to one mole of sulfuric acid in the numerator, and the units, gram sulfuric acid, cancel out. Now we want to go from moles of sulfuric acid to moles of our wanted, which is oxygen. And we know that three moles of sulfuric acid in the denominator is going to be equal to five moles of oxygen in the numerator and the units moles of sulfuric acid cancel out. Finally, we're going from moles of oxygen, our wanted unit, to liters of oxygen. And we know that one mole of any gas at STP takes up 2.414 liters. We multiply the numerators together and divide by the denominators, and we get 1.52 liters of oxygen gas. So if we reacted four grams of sulfuric acid, we'd get 1.52 liters of oxygen gas according to this equation. Sample problem number two. How many grams of hydrogen peroxide are required to produce 5.00 times 10 to the 21 molecules of, of water? We're given 5.00 times 10 to 21 molecules of water, which is much less than a mole, because remember a mole is 6.0 to the 23rd molecules. And we want to find out how many grams of hydrogen peroxide are required to produce that number of molecules of water. So remember, whatever we're given, we're going to convert it into moles. So if we, have, if we want to find the grams of hydrogen peroxide, we're going to need to know how much the mass of one mole of hydrogen peroxide is, and we get that from the periodic table. One mole of hydrogen peroxide has a molar mass of 34.0 grams per mole. And we know that 0.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of anything is equal to one mole. So we can convert molecules to mole, and we can convert grams of hydrogen peroxide to moles. And finally, we just need to, to um, relate moles of hydrogen peroxide to moles of water, and we get that from the balanced equation. Five moles of hydrogen peroxide make eight moles of water. 
We set up our problem question mark wanted, question mark grams of hydrogen peroxide is equal to 5.00 times 10 to the 21 molecules of water dot line. We want to cancel out the unit's molecules of water. We find molecules in this conversion factor, so we're going to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in the denominator, which is equal, is equal to one mole of water in the numerator. And the unit's molecules of water cancel out. Then we need to convert moles of water to moles of hydrogen peroxide. And we want to cancel out moles of water, so we're going to put moles of water in the denominator. Eight moles of water produce five moles of hydrogen peroxide. So the unit's moles of water cancel out. And finally, to go from five moles of hydrogen peroxide to molecules, excuse me, to grams of hydrogen peroxide, confuse H2O and H2O2, to go from five moles of hydrogen peroxide to grams of hydrogen peroxide, I'm going to use my final conversion factor. I'll put in the denominator one mole of hydrogen peroxide is equal, is equal to 34.0 grams of hydrogen peroxide. The moles of hydrogen peroxide, those units cancel out. And when we multiply the numerators together and divide by we should get grams of hydrogen peroxide, which is 0 0.176. So 0 0.176 grams of hydrogen peroxide produce 5.0021 molecules of water. Sample problem number three, same equation. How many kilojoules of energy are released if 49.1 grams of sulfuric acid are consumed? We haven't dealt with before, but you'll see it's, it's the same as dealing with any other species in a balanced chemical equation. We're given 49.1 grams of sulfuric acid, and we want to know how many kilojoules that should release. So whatever we're given, we turn it into moles. We need to know how many moles 49.1 grams of sulfuric acid is, so we need to find the molar mass of sulfuric acid, and we find that the, the molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98.1 grams per mole. So 49 is approximately, it's probably, it's approximately half a mole of sulfuric acid. And then we need to relate moles of sulfuric acid, which is here, to kilojoules of energy. And we know that three moles of sulfuric acid produce 418 kilojoules of energy. Now we set up our problem, question mark wanted, question mark kilojoules is equal to 49.1 grams of sulfuric acid dot line. To cancel out the units grams of sulfuric acid, we find the the species in our conversion factors that contain grams of sulfuric acid, which is 98.1. So we put 98.1 grams of sulfuric acid in the denominator, which is equal to one mole of sulfuric acid in the numerator, and the units grams of sulfuric acid cancel out. And finally, we need to convert moles of sulfuric acid to kilojoules of energy. And we know from the balanced equation that three moles of sulfuric acid is 118 kilojoules of energy. The units moles of sulfuric acid cancel out, numerators together and divide by the denominators, and we get 7 kilojoules of energy. Sample problem number four. How many molecules of potassium permanganate must be consumed to release 338 kilojoules of energy? So we know for every two moles of potassium permanganate, we produce 418 kilojoules of energy. Since we're producing less than that, since we're producing in this problem 338 kilojoules of energy, I imagine we're going to have less than 2 moles of potassium permanganate, which means fewer than 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So let's see what it is. It's going to be something between 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and 1.2 times 10 to the 24th, which is double that. So we're given 338 kilojoules. We want to know how many molecules of potassium permanganate we're going to need to consume to make that amount of energy. To get our conversion factor, we convert everything to moles. So how many molecules are in a mole of potassium permanganate? The same number of molecules that are in a mole of anything, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then our balance equation is going to relate moles of potassium permanganate to kilojoules of energy. We know that two moles of potassium permanganate produce 418 kilojoules of energy. Now we can set up our problem. Question mark wanted. Question mark molecules of potassium permanganate is equal to the given. 338 kilojoules of energy dot line. We want to first eliminate our, our first unit, kilojoules, so we're going to put from our conversion factor, 418 kilojoules is equal to 2 moles of potassium permanganate, and kilojoules cancel. Finally, we want to convert moles of potassium permanganate to molecules of potassium permanganate. We know that one 
mole in the denominator units, moles potassium permanganate cancel out. We know that one mole of potassium permanganate contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, and the units, moles of potassium permanganate cancel out. We multiply the numerators together and divide by the denominators, and we get 9.74 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, which is somewhere between, as I said, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and double that, 1.2 times 10 to the 24th. I hope you enjoyed this video. To get more stoichiometry help and your free copy of my Amazon.com best-selling book, Solving Mole Problems, go to purplestoic.com. I'm Melanie Fine, and this is Chem in 10. This is Melanie Fine of Chem in 10, and today I'm going to go over some stoichiometry examples.